Let's talk about something that rarely gets mentioned uh, by the poker community, uh, but it's something that I I, per, I personally think is, is hugely important, and I know that Veneer agreed is very important, um, and that's going to be finding time to take off, um, because as, like I said earlier, as a professional poker player, you essentially have you are your own boss so in theory you can take off you know at three months if you really wanted to um but i would argue that that's not particularly sound um but i know of many many poker players who have a tough time separating uh their time around the house from grinding excessively and i think that it's important for you to find either you know find a week find two weeks during the year to take just completely off of poker. And what I mean by completely off of poker is don't check two plus two. Don't don't uh don't look at look at the sites, check out tables. Like basically just remove yourself completely from the poker world for t for for roughly two weeks. I try to do it once a year. Uh, it's usually around the holidays that I end up taking essentially two weeks off. Um don't do really any coaching, don't do um you know, any play or any essentially looking at anything that is related to poker, I usually don't do anything in that sense. Um, and I think that it's, 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 it's an amazing, um, you know, I guess playing poker is really, really taxing on your mind. Um, so giving yourself a break from, uh, the constant pressure that you always apply to yourself is going to be something that is going to be hugely plus EV. And I assure you that when you get back from that vacation, you're going to feel revitalized. Uh, and ready to play again, um, and you know, and it will be one of those things where you'll learn that you didn't miss anything in those two weeks. Like there was nothing, you know, crazy going on, unless you happen to take two weeks off from like, oh, I don't know, um, April 10th to like April 24th this year. You might have noticed uh, something was different when you got back. Um, but you can, kind of, but you kind of see what I'm getting at. Um, the next thing that I, you know, I would like to mention is probably is, is probably another one of those. Things I would again say probably I probably should stop saying these things fall under the really important category, as this entire video is essentially based off of important uh, topics. But this one is going to be one that so many poker players, and especially mediocre 100 and all 50 and all regulars, struggle with big time. And it's going to be dealing with distractions. Um, and just to list a couple of distractions that I know that are common, and, and personally I have actually fought off myself, uh, will be searching the web, stuff like Facebook, 2 plus 2, your email, as well as like having TV in the background. Um, these are all things that can really pull you from the the deepest thought that you can have. And as a professional poker player, you're going to be... Anytime you're applying yourself 100%, you're making more money than when you're not. So a good way, and the, the, I know the way that I kicked most of 2 plus two, 2 surfing when I actually play, is by realizing that by pulling open 2 plus 2 in the middle of a session, checking out some thread talking about nonsense, um, it's going to actually lose me money. So if I don't open, so basically by clicking the little icon on my on my browser or even opening up my browser in the first place, I'm actually costing myself a win rate. Um, and so that actually hit pretty close to home. I was like, I'm not playing 100%. I'm not paying attention 100%. Uh, so these distractions are unacceptable. I would argue that TV is one that is, if you have the TV on while you're playing, cut that out right now. Um, there is nobody at, who can do something 100% uh, with the TV on, and I'll use my fiance as an example. She always does homework with the TV on, and it always takes three times longer to do than if she had just sat down to do it herself. Um, but it's something that we get in the habit of just liking to have kind of a distraction to go to instead of actually buckling down. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to talk about is something that a lot of poker players either don't do or completely lie about. Um, and what I mean by that is, I guess I guess I'll mention the topic first, which is paying your own benefits and doing your own taxes. And I can't stress enough that if you are deciding to be a professional poker player, write in the cost of your benefits and the cost of your CPA into your yearly salary. And what I mean by that is is don't just say don't don't make them side notes, make them absolutely mandatory. Um, you should have health insurance, you should have dental insurance, and you should have a and, and in my opinion, unless you're a tax whiz, you should have a CPA who's looking over your taxes and is signing off on them for you. Um, so that if you do ever end up being audited or d if you ever end up having a confrontation with the IRS, that you have somebody who has your back.